Hello there. It's day 271 of our chronological Bible reading. And today, we have read the book of Haggai. So only two, two chapters, so chapters 1 and 2 of the book of Haggai. For those of you who would like to join our chronological Bible reading, just visit my YouTube channel and then on a video like this one at the bottom you'll see the description box and then like this one click on here right show more click here and then just scroll down a little bit you'll see my social media accounts so here uh, as you can see here my twitter truth inside underscore right my instagram truth dot insight and my facebook at truth insight 2020 so on this uh, social media accounts you'll see what book and what chapters to read for the day so now let's share what we've learned So since the book of Haggai is really short, only two, two, two chapters, so let's just read it again, right? So Haggai, chapter 1, a call to rebuild the temple. On August 29 of the second year of King Darius' reign, the Lord gave a message through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel son of Shethiel, governor of Judah, and to Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord of heaven armies, heaven's armies says. The people are saying, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much but harvest little. You eat but are not satisfied. You drink but are still thirsty. You put on clothes but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for rich harvests, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. While all of you are busy building your own fine houses, it's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I have called for a drought on your fields and hills, a drought to wither the grain and grapes and olive trees and all your other crops, a drought to starve you and your livestock and to ruin everything you have worked so hard to get. Obedience to God's call. Then Serubabel, son of Shethiel, and Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of God's people 
began to obey the message from the Lord their God. When they heard the words of the prophet Haggai, whom the Lord their God had sent, the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave the people this message from the Lord. I am with you, says the Lord. So the Lord sparked the enthusiasm of Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, and the enthusiasm of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the enthusiasm of the whole remnant of God's people. They began to work on the house of their God, the Lord of Heaven's armies, on September 21 of the second year of the king Darius reign. So what's important to note on this chapter is this. You just uh, um, scroll up a little. So for this point, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much but harvest little. You eat but are not satisfied. You drink but are still thirsty. You put on clothes but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Sounds familiar, right? What sounds familiar? I think during our time now, this sounds very familiar. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in packets filled with holes. Let's hold that thought for a moment. Let's go to the next chapter. Okay. Chapter 2 The New Temple's Diminished Splendor Then on October 17 of that same year, the Lord sent another message through the prophet Haggai. Say this to Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, and to Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of God's people there in the land. Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? How, in comparison, does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. But now, the Lord says, Be strong, Zerubbabel, be strong. Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people still left in the land. And now get to work, for I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised when you came out of Egypt, so do not be afraid. For this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, In just a little while I will again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and the treasures of all the nations will be brought to this temple. I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. And in this place I will bring peace. I, the Lord of Heaven's armies, have spoken. Blessings promise for obedience. On December 18 of the second year of King Darius' reign, the Lord sent this message to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Ask the priests this question about the law. If, if one of you is carrying some meat from a holy sacrifice in his robes, and his robe happens to brush against some bread or stew, wine or olive oil, or any kind of food, will it also become holy? The priest replied, no. Then Haggai asked, if someone becomes ceremonially unclean by touching a dead person and then touches any of these foods, will the food be defiled? And the priests answered, yes. Then Haggai responded, 
that is how it is with these people and this nation, says the Lord. Everything they do every, and everything they offer is defiled by their sin. Look at what was happening to you before you began to lay the foundation of the Lord's temple. When you hope for a 20 bushel crop, you harvested only 10. When you expected to draw 50 gallons from the wine press, you found only 20. I sent blight and mildew and hail to destroy everything you worked so hard to produce. Even so, you refused to return to me, says the Lord. Think about this 18th day of December, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Think carefully. I am giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn. You have not yet harvested your grain and your grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, and olive trees have not yet produced their crops. But from this day onward, I will bless you. Promises for Zerubbabel On that same day, December 18, the Lord sent this second message to Haggai. Tell Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, that I am about to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow royal thrones and destroy the power of foreign kingdoms. I will overturn their chariots and riders. The horses will fall and their riders will kill each other. But when this happens, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, I will honor you, Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, my servant. I will make you like a signet ring on my finger, says the Lord. For I have chosen you, I, the Lord of Heaven's armies, have spoken. So here, so from this verse, right? Then Haggai responded. That is how it is with these people and this nation, says the Lord. So everything they do and everything they offer is defiled by their sin. Look at what was happening to you before you began to lay the foundation of the Lord's temple. The previous chapter, right? When you hope for a 20 bushel crop, you harvested only 10. When you expected to draw 50 gallons of white wine press, you found only 20. I sent blight and mildew and hail to destroy everything you work so hard to produce. And then, even so, you refuse to return to me, says the Lord. So as you can see here, defiled by their sin. So anything they offer, right, is defiled by their sin. So God wants them to repent, right? Repent from their sins and turn to God, right? Because if they will not repent, they will just offer things. Well, it's defiled by their sin, so it will not be accepted. So this description was actually the previous chapter, right? So let's go back. Haggai 1. Where was that? Uh, verse 5, I think. So this one, right? Remember this? Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Right? So if we'll read further down to verse 9, right? You hope for rich harvest, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, while all of you are busy building your own fine house. Houses. You see? It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. 
also seek the Lord, Lord first, right? And everything else will be added unto you. That reminds me of this verse in Matthew chapter 6. Okay? This verse here. Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need right so if we are having financial problems here on earth or any problems for that matter we should examine ourselves and seek the kingdom of god and repent from our sins and choose to please God, then God will give us everything we need. Like now, people are praying, most people are praying the, for the pandemic to end. But, you know, if you think deeper, what if this pandemic is a punishment for our sins. We keep on asking in prayer to end the pandemic, but we're not repenting from our sins. What we should do is repent from our sins, turn to God, and obey God, choose to please God, humble ourselves before God. Now, one big question here is this one. Seek the kingdom of God. How are you going to do that? Of course, read the Bible cover to cover. There's no shortcut. It's important that we read the Bible cover to cover, not bits and pieces. Right? For example, this one. If you just read this verse here, right? So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today, right? If you only read this verse, so don't worry about these things, saying what we will eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs so if you only read that and you will not read this verse 33 then you lose the complete truth here right if you're not seeking God's kingdom and you're not obeying God then you have to worry you will be punished right so what's the thought here is that seek God's kingdom above all else and live righteously, then he will give you everything you need. Then you don't have to worry. Okay? That's all for today. See you again next time.